Hey guys, welcome back. I am Brie. If you are new here, I live in Kansas Zone 6B and today I'm going to do the very first garden tour of the 2023 season. This is something I like to do monthly up until about October to show you how the garden changes throughout the growing season. So this is actually going to be everything before our last average frost. Our last average frost here where I live in Kansas is April 19th and that was yesterday. I believe this video will go up here in a day or two and I really wanted to show you guys everything that I have currently planted before our last expectant frost. So the month of April for us has been very very warm so far but we do have a cold spell coming in this next week and we do have some low 30s on the little schedule there so it's ruining my plans just a little bit but I know better when it comes to Kansas I typically plan to plant out the very first week of May just because April here is a weird one this has been very 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 warm for us so uh, things are looking really good in the garden so far and I'm really excited to show you guys everything going on so I always like to start in the front of my garden but honestly there is not much that I need to unpack at the moment when it comes to this space these four beds are completely empty this is where a lot of my frost tender stuff will go but we have two volunteers that decided to pop up that I'm very excited about. We have some chamomile here and chamomile wasn't even planted over here last year. It was over like three or four beds away. So for this to pop up, I noticed the leaves and like that is 100% chamomile and I was right. It's really starting to bud now, which is exciting because I honestly was hoping that the one spot would come back and it didn't. So for this one to randomly pop up was really fun. And then here, I believe this is a goldie honey bear sunflower because my goldies were right here in the corners of each bed. And if this is a goldie honey bear sunflower, I'm gonna be so excited because again, those are my absolute favorite and that would make this one the very first to bloom. So this is the very front of this space and you can see there's the two volunteers. All of this here is empty. I do have some lavender coming back though. I actually thought this was dead until I saw that green though yesterday. But then I also have a bunch of seedlings uh, currently hardening off a little bit today. All of these are all of the ones that will be going out here in about a week or two, but those four beds are completely empty. So kind of boring in the very front here. I have a blueberry plant right here. And then as we move forward, I'm gonna show you the strawberries. I don't really wanna show you too much of this strawberry bed yet because this is going to be next week's video on how we built the strawberry cage. I've been having so many issues with squirrels and birds over the last two years when it came to my strawberries that I knew I had to figure out some type of solution this year that would be effective so we built a cage you can see the strawberries are blooming like crazy and we should have some strawberries here shortly which I am absolutely so excited about all right now over here we have like my perennial grow bag which I love perennials because you can see how just so much foliage there's so much foliage going on we have onion balloons from our onion chives happening and perennials are just great we also have echinacea over here growing back so this is going to be a flowered filled little beautiful spot that will bloom just before so many other things in this garden space and having like onion chives like this are so fun because they come back every single year they are so easy and pretty much you don't have to do anything when it comes to onion chives and yarrow is so beautiful I even made tinctures out of this last year and it makes a beautiful cut flower so I absolutely love this space here so one thing I did differently with this space this year was I actually did a soil test back in February and I sent it off through my extension office. My garden is established now so there's been no new soil entered into this garden. So I took seven different areas of this space and shockingly enough everything was about the same. I was low in nitrogen but I was high in phosphorus and potassium and also my pH was high. So one thing that they recommended was that I lower my pH using some garden sulfur, which I was able to do. And then instead of adding any more phosphorus or uh, potassium to the soil, I added nitrogen. So I added some worm castings and blood mill to the soil. So I'll be really interested to see how this garden will play out this year. I wrote off a lot of my problems last year to being heat, which a lot of my problems last year were due to heat. But I knew that soil does play a huge role in how things produce and the health of the plants and all that. So I really wanted to play around with that this year and really start learning differences like with my soil, how to feed plants better correctly and all of that. Now that I've really gotten the groove of gardening over the last six years, this is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle. So doing that test was really, really cool and interesting. And it's probably going to be something I continue to do in the future. It was so nice going through the extension office because it took all the guesswork out. It told me exactly what I needed to add and not add to the soil to help balance things out. 
So this is the year I'm really hoping we get some amazing crops. So here in front of me, we actually have my onions. I have three beds of onions and my onions are looking so, so good at the moment. So one thing I'm doing differently from this year from last year is I'm not touching these onions for the rest of the time that they are in the soil for the most part. I'm not topping them, I'm not doing anything like that. So last year, I actually topped these greens once they were planted and I believe that is what caused my onions to clonk out early. I ended up having disease come through and kind of just kill off my onions early. So we are not touching them this year. After doing a lot of research, there's a lot of people that suggest do not, do not cut the tops at all because again, it can enter in all of those diseases that you do not want. So this is going to be a pretty hands-off crop this year. So I obviously plant a lot of garlic as well and garlic is one of my absolute favorite crops. You plant this at the like mid to end of October, pretty much do nothing minus feed it a handful of times when it comes to spring into summer and then you harvest it. This is one of the first things I harvest out of my garden. It will be harvested about mid-June and I'm so excited about this year because this is the first year I didn't have to buy any seed garlic. This is all from my previous harvest last year and it is looking so so good i just absolutely think garlic is just so easy it's a great crop for beginners and when you enter into like the true growing season of summer this is one of your first huge harvests minus like a lot of your cold brassicas and there's nothing there is nothing like the flavor i get questions all the time on like why would you even grow that much garlic because the flavor does not compare so yeah garlic 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 onions 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 so i have six beds just devoted to onions and garlic but i like to plant a lot of my staples i want to grow as much as i possibly can in my backyard so growing things i use in my kitchen on a daily basis is definitely needed so these two beds here look like absolutely nothing but there are potatoes in them so i planted kennebec potatoes which is a blight resistant variety so i have no idea what happened but this audio got really messed up i sound like a robot here is proof me if i've grown potatoes so i have grown potatoes so i'm just going to voice over this and i'm going to find clips of me planting the potatoes because i never showed me planting the potatoes the last two years i have not been that successful and that's why i don't talk about potatoes often. Somehow it's supposed to be one of the easiest crops to grow for beginners, but it's one I have actually struggled with over the last few years. I ordered five pounds from Johnny's. I was able to get these two beds planted out with potatoes and I got the Kennebec variety because I really wanted to find a blight resistant potato because last year that's what ended up knocking out the potatoes early. When I planted all I did was loosen up the soil. I planted about four inches deep in trenches and then I covered everything back up, mulched it to keep the soil moist and then I'll just continue to throw a straw on top of it as the potatoes grow. So that pretty much concludes everything in the current space here. This is like my main little space. We have the trellis tunnel, a few open beds that will be planted with like herbs, flowers, stuff like that. We also have the in ground space where all the tomatoes will go. Um, I have all sorts of things planned when it comes to all that. We have some direct sowing that needs to be done. But one thing I have not shown you guys is the space I built for the chickens, which is kind of off subject since we're talking garden tour here. But I did make a short on it if you're interested. This is a non-electrical fence that I got them. A lot of people were like really hesitant on me getting a non-electrical fence, but hear me out. These girls are only really outside if I'm outside and we don't really have a lot of uh, predator pressure during the day. So I thought this would be a great little addition, which it has been. They absolutely love it. I was having issues just with some pecking order stuff because they got cooped up all winter long. And I think them having like the plastic around their coop and not being able to like see and do things just made them uh, very irritable with each other. So ever since getting this additional space, they've been so much better and the feathers that they were trying to pick out of each other's back backs are growing back so that's a really good sign but there's your little update on the chickens but we also have this little area here that i need to show you so this bed is full of broccoli and i planted out all of my cold crops over here in this little section because this is an area of my garden i have never been successful with because this likes to really shade out once these trees really start putting on leaves, which they are starting to do. But I thought that would be a really good opportunity for a lot of my cool weather crops because I have a lot of issues here in Kansas when it comes to spring and fall like planting because we can either get warm and stay warm really fast, kind of like we have been this entire month of April. We've been in the 80s the entire month of April, which is very warm. Um, but I'm hoping that 
casting the shade will help them not bolt and I can actually get a crop out of them. When it comes to winter time, like into fall, I also have the same issue where we will either just stay warm far too long and a lot of these crops will end up bolting or we get really cold really fast. And a lot of a lot of the times our spring and our fall is really, really tricky when it comes to these cool weather crops. So yeah, that is one reason why I have them over in this space for like the third time. I do have these hoops up and I do plan to put insect netting up, but I honestly just don't know if I will or not. I've been doing a lot of hand picking when it comes to pest control over the last year. And honestly, I found that to be like the most effective way. Insect netting is great as well, but I only think I have enough insect netting to be able to wrap this space. And I also have cabbages and stuff as well. So. I don't know, I might just keep a big eye on them if I get the insect netting up. It really needs to happen like now because I just started to see cabbage moss floating around and that's what uh, green caterpillars will get on your broccoli, your cabbage, all of that and just eat them really fast. So you gotta keep an eye out for the eggs underneath the leaves, but so far this broccoli looks so beautiful. I believe this is the variety called Bell Star. Um, from Johnny's. I'll have to double check on that, but it is a hybrid variety that I really was excited to try. And for the rest of the space, we have cabbages, which I'm actually going to be planting my lettuce between here tomorrow. I really just needed to let my lettuce harden off just a little bit more. And then we have things like spinach, kale, kohlrabi, and then this right here looks like a bunch of weeds, but it's actually a wildflower mix. I had this all, um, strawed up as well and some reason uh the straw just didn't want to stay uh but i do have a ton of these little helicopter things from my maple tree and these things are the death of me every single year when it comes to my garden and i always forget about them until they all fall off the tree and then i'm pulling out maple trees from everywhere in my garden hello So that is currently everything in this space. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot to get planted before the last average frost. I wanted to show you exactly everything that was planted in my garden because I know when I first started gardening, I wouldn't have thought that half of this was able to be planted before your last expected frost date. I got so many questions over the last six weeks on what zone I lived in, when was my last expected frost, how are you already planting that, that I really wanted to show what the garden can look like right at this point before your last average frost, even though t yesterday was my last average frost, we're kind of past it but again you don't necessarily want to plant right when your last average happens because again that's an average and Kansas is crazy and we can always get cold like we are about to get this next week so I was really excited to show you guys exactly what today looks like and I'm really excited to show you how this space evolves over the next few months so if you're not subscribed make sure you're subscribed because again I will be making these videos every month through October November and it's really cool to see exactly how the space evolves and changes throughout that time so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys all next week week. Bye.